coming up on the first pitch showing the slab in today's game Luis Heal and Singy we were talking earlier about how he's doing a great job navigating through tough spots I've just been so impressed with when it seems like there's more pressure he's more calm and settles in he's done an incredible job with runners in scoring position most guys they get a little tight they start to aim the baseball but for some reason he gets looser the ball comes out of his hand with more life and he's able to wiggle off the hook of you know tough situations and get his team back in the dugout next offering is in for a strike if he doesn't get a knock right here that pitch he just took is going to eat at him for a while you might not see another pitch like that from a top level guy like this and the righty deals. Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it. A gigantic blast. Just like that, they move in front. It's 1-0. He absolutely crushed that one. No doubt about that one, Boog. We knew it wasn't coming back. Well, you got to love a game that brings some action from the jump. And at the plate, he was looking for a pitch to absolutely drive. And you know, leadoff hitters aren't up there anymore just working the count, trying to get on. They're looking to make some noise and do some damage. Now here's Bobby Witt Jr. And the right-hander deals. Swing and a miss struck him out. And that's the first strikeout of his major league career. And it could be the first of many if he meets the goals he set for himself and the expectations others have for him. He doesn't want to just win games. He wants to dominate at this level. Do you think young pitchers could sometimes get too caught up in trying to rack up K's early in their career? Boog, I think they can. It's kind of like a hitter that doesn't have power. The Go thrill team. is still hitting the ball over the fence. And so for a guy, even if he doesn't have power stuff or strikeout stuff, a strikeout is still something that makes him stick his chest out a little bit further. The pitch. Still two and two after the foul ball. Part of the order coming through now, and with one home run already in this inning, they're definitely looking to do some more damage. And down on strikes he goes, and there are two outs. Well, that slider wasn't even close to the strike zone, and he got him to chase. That's just a bad approach right there. Either he was looking for something else and got completely fooled, or he was sitting all over the slider and just couldn't resist the temptation. But, man, really expanded right there and didn't have a chance of making contact with that pitch. MJ Melendez steps in for the Royals. Wouldn't chase that time. Two down, base is empty, but one run across, and we're just getting started here in the top of the first. Well, with this many pitches thrown here in this first inning, I mean, you're giving the other team a really good look. He's going to have to find a way to get some weak contact. Oh, now this one's high and deep. Way back there. On its way. Gone. A massive home run. It's their second home run of the inning, and they add to the lead. It's 2-0. He put a charge into that one. That was a lightning swing right there, no doubt about it. Knew what pitch he wanted to hit. Spent on some other pitches in this at bat. Was very patient, and it paid off. Two outs, nobody on. And to the play for Kansas City, Hunter Renfro. There's a strike up on. And it's one and two. Got him looking 
looking. That's a strikeout. The two-round trippers in this inning. The long ball was working. It's now a 2-0 ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Back in the Bronx. And on the hill, the lefty, Cole Reagans. Well, he's been a very dependable starter for his club. And what stands out for me is that left-handed hitters have really struggled batting below 200 against him. And it just tells me they have a hard time tracking the baseball. Maybe it's the release point. Maybe it's the motion. But just some way, somehow, they've got to figure out a way to pick it up and try to have some success from the left side. Bottom of the first. And stepping in for the Yankees, Glaber Torres. Looking for his first big league hit right here. Here's a one-two. Can't connect on the curveball, struck him out. Well, that's always the key to effective pitching is getting ahead in the count. And as a pitcher, it really allows you to start expanding the zone. Hitters become defensive, and all of a sudden that plate starts to get really wide. And what happens is because of the pressure, you end up this one's fair down the line and left. And it's going to be extra bases into second with a double. And they've got something growing now. Juan Soto with his first major league hit. And this is a moment I'm sure he'll never forget. Congrats. Yeah, great moment for him and his family. A guy works so hard and has to wait so long for this to happen. And when it does, it can kind of be overwhelming, Boog. You still have to stay locked in on the game, but it's great when you can take a minute to just appreciate what you've done and how hard you've worked to get here. One down. Here is Aaron Judge. Yeah, big swing and a miss. One ball. Two strikes. Man at second. Got him swinging. He's locked in at the plate when he's using the whole field. He was out in front there. Just needs to let the ball travel a little more, and his timing will be back on track. Good pitch for the strikeout. And here's the rookie catcher, Austin Wells. Man on second, two down. In for a strike. Now one and two. And now the lefty, they tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. To the right side, and that one handled. The throw to first, inning over. One left for the Yankees, and they're down 2-0. in New York top of the second so up now for Kansas City Michael Massey the two one and there's a foul ball the wind of the pitch fights it off you'll see another the string with the change up struck him out here's Guriel next offering in there for a strike and a count one and two Some heat there at 98 miles an hour. 
back to back strikeouts to start the frame and that's now three in a row. Yeah he's really settling in and getting a feel for his pitches throwing them where he wants to right now. So we'll see how long he can keep this streak going late on that fastball. Two out spaces empty. Swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. Royals bats are quiet there, but they hold a two nothing lead. Back now in the Bronx, bottom of the second. John Carlo Stanton to the plate now. John Carlo Stanton. Rip to short. In time to Guriel. And they take care of Stanton for the out. The third baseman, Jazz Chisholm Jr. Jazz Chisholm Jr. now. Jazz missed some time last season thanks to injuries, Boo. An oblique strain cost him a few weeks, and a battle with turf toe sidelined him for more than a month. What stinks is nobody wants to be on the field more than this guy. Comes up empty. That's strike two. One and two. One out, base is empty. Waves at the bender for the strikeout. Well, that's a curveball that people like to describe as a hammer or Uncle Charlie, and you can see why. It's not a looping slow curve. He throws it hard, and it gets plenty of bite on the end. And here is Anthony Rizzo. That's down and in. Pitch misses, and that's ball three. Puts it in the air out towards left center. He's got it, and that is out number three. After two, it's a two-nothing ball game. Top half of the third inning. Here's the center fielder, Kyle Isbell. Kyle Isbell. The one two. Headed down the line. He dives, but can't make the play, and that's a foul ball. And another ball. Oh, he never moved because he never had time to. But that kind of velocity, you'd prefer that pitcher work away. Righty to the plate. On the ground to the left. And it goes just foul. And here comes. Missed okay. with a changeup, and the count's full. That's Swings right. through it, and that's a strikeout. Well, so right now, he's in cruise control, autopilot, just now dominating that. these hitters. It doesn't look like it's a fun at bat, and all of a sudden, you become in awe of this guy on the mound. Somebody's got to break this thing up. That's five straight strikeouts. Got to put a ball in play. Now a high fly ball out to left center. Judge sizes this one up. He's got it. And there's two away. The bat, number seven. Short one. Bobby Witt. Jr. Bobby Witt Jr. at the dish now. He committed to play for the University of Oklahoma, where his dad went 
before the Royals changed his mind. He would have been the number one overall pick in most drafts as a high schooler. He would have. Oh, this one high and deep. Way back there. And that gets down in the corner. And that's a double. Bobby Witt Jr. with his first major league hit. And this is a moment I'm sure he'll never forget. Congrats. Yeah, great moment for him and his family. A guy works so hard and has to wait so long for this to happen. And when it does, it can kind of be overwhelming, Boog. You still have to stay locked in on the game, but it's great when you can take a minute to just appreciate what you've done and how hard you've worked to get here. And now it's Salvador Perez to the plate. Two outs. Swing and a miss. And the count one and two. Well, Chris, through the early stages, he hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. Man at second. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. So a two-out double, but they don't score. We move on to the bottom of inning number three. It's the Royals two and the Yankees nothing. Back for more from the Bronx. Set for the bottom of the third. And stepping in for the Yankees, Anthony Volpe. The wind in the pitch. Hard hit left side. Sends it across yeah. to first. Leadoff hitter gone in the third. Here's Alex Verdugo. The Yanks trailing by two here in the last half of the third. And that's outside. Three and one. Check swing, he went too far, and it's a strike. The lefty fires. Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. One down, base is empty. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. Left hand batter waits. And there's ball, ball four. four. It wasn't easy, but he earned that walk after a long at bat. Got a great back and forth in that at bat. Oh, he had to play off some really close pitches, and somehow, Boogie he found a way to keep the bat on his shoulder right there. I'll tell you right now, I couldn't have done it. Here's a 1-1. One -one. Glaber takes outside. Clearly didn't come out of his hand the right way. Left that curveball way up. Man at first, one away. In the air to left center. Sizing this one up. Two down. Now back, the designated hit. Juan Soto. Here's Juan Soto. He's not going to get cheated up there. No, he's not. He's looking to do damage with every swing he takes. Verdugo leads off first with two down to the inning. Swing and a miss, and that is that. The Yanks lead one. They trail things here, 2-0. at Yankee Stadium. John Chompy with Chris Singleton and set to lead off the fourth, MJ Melendez. Ball to strike, the pitch. Fouls one off out of play, back to our left. The pitch. 
Swing and a miss, and he chases that one in the dirt. Got him. One away on the strikeout. The right fielder, number 16. Now it's Hunter Renfro. Renfro. For you growing up in New York City, I mean, you're a big sports fan. Tell me about your experience with the Yankees growing up. I really went to Shea Stadium more than I did to Yankee Stadium. I grew up a Phillies fan. There was one game, though, that I... This one swung on and hit well. Way back there. And gone! And they add a run. It's 3-0. He was able to hit one out in this weather. Are you kidding me? How did he do that? That's exactly the pitch he was looking for. Crushes it and hits it out of the ballpark. Base is empty, one away. Michael Massey steps in for the Royals. No, and there's a ball. Singy, four homers in 22 Going games on. at Old Yankee Stadium. What do you remember? Well, I remember my rookie year hitting two in one game. And, you know, before that game in the clubhouse, there was a gentleman there who owned a suit company there in downtown Manhattan. And he said to me, hey, kid, you hit a home run in the game tonight. Come over to the store tomorrow and I'll give you a free suit. Now batting. The first base. Two outs, base is empty at the play. Yuli Gurriel. So I went into the game. I happened to hit two. When I walked into the store the next day, and he looked at me, he said, you're trying to put me out of business, aren't you? And that was a great, <laughs> great experience that I had as a rookie playing against the Yankees playing in New York. That misses off the outside edge. So did Super Joe give you two suits? Super Joe hooked me up with two suits. Next offering is in for a strike. Outside, and that is ball four. It's been a little bit of a shaky inning, but he's still in a good spot to get out of this thing without giving up any more runs. He's just got to turn the page and go after this next guy. Two outs, runner at first. Now the third baseman. Two balls and a strike. Here it comes. And that one in the air center field. Judge makes the grab, and that'll end the inning. And a run to the Royals lead with this homer. It's now 3-0. Back after this on the show. Here at New Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Bottom four, it's Aaron Judge now. The pitch. On the ground, out to short. Slings it across. Judge out on the play. Now that catcher. And next for New York, Austin Wells. Base is empty, one away. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. Swing and a miss. Cold oh, night tonight, Boog, and that's a pretty firm fastball right there. I tell you what, memories of getting jammed, they are creeping into my mind right now. And down on strikes, out number two. Well, pitchers have become so much better at commanding that high fastball. It used to be that a lot of pitchers didn't like to throw it because it threw off their release point and their mechanics, and they're aimed at keeping everything at the knees, get ground balls, but because hitters get a swing path that can lift balls at the knees up in the air and over the fence, this pitch has come back into play, and they are doing some special things with it. Giancarlo Stanton with his first major league hit. And this is a moment I'm sure he'll never forget. Congrats. 
Yeah, great moment for him and his family. A guy works so hard and has to wait so long for this to happen. And when it does, it can kind of be overwhelming, Boog. You still have to stay locked in on the game, but it's great when you can take a minute to just appreciate what you've done and how hard you've worked to get here. So two down, Jazz Chisholm Jr. stepping in now for the Yankees. And a pitch. Battling here as he fouls it away. The pitch. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. One left for the Yankees. They trail in this one, 3 0. set for the start of the inning and to the play for Kansas City Kyle Isbell one and two here chases the fastball up the ladder struck him out now at 10 K's with still a few innings left so expect him to add on to that total and you know pitchers are looking to have a strikeout per inning I mean that's excellent work uh, the way it looks now, I mean, he's going to have a better rate than that in this one. So really good stuff working on the mound in this one. Oh. And that's off the inside edge. Three and one now. Action in the pen down there. Ron Marinaccio getting loose out there for Aaron Boone. Hill, a left-hander, also throwing. And he Thank walked you, him. Pretty easy walk right there. Last pitch wasn't even much to think about. The bat at number seven. Here's the shortstop Bobby at the play. Witt Bobby Witt Jr. Jr. Singing. He's a guy that covers both sides of the plate about as well as anyone in the sport. How difficult is that to do? Well, I'll just look at the back of my bubblegum card. You'll see how hard it is. These guys are great, man. They have the ability to look out there, but also to be able to turn on the inside pitch. Those that can really sharpen things on the outer half, those are the ones that become elite. Swings through that one for strike two. So critical to keep an eye on the pitch count this time of the year. Guys can start to run on fumes a little bit. Mechanics can drop off. And we know they need him to be fresh and ready for big innings in October. He's been trying to tease the zone with that slider, but these hitters have showed patience not going outside the strike zone. And now two and two. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. These two offenses could put up runs in a hurry. The 2-2 now. Three balls. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with the three-hole hitter coming up if he's walked. At the belt and fires. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Here comes a 3-2. Hammer down the line, and now maybe extra bases. Lead runner makes the turn at second. Fan around third. The relay to the plate. The tag out. A lot of real estate to cover on that play defensively. A long throw to the cutoff man, and then a lot of ground to make up as well on the relay. But an excellent job of execution and getting that out at the dish as he tried to make it home all the way from first base. Salvador Perez digs in now. The 1 1. Late on that fastball. The pitch. Base knock right field. Here comes Witt around third. The throw in. And he's in there as a run scores. So he gets two milestones with that hit. His first big league knock. And he drives in his first run as well. 
Yeah, you love to get both of those out of the way with just one swing of the bat, and it makes the special moment even more special. It's not just an individual accomplishment when you're also driving in a run for your team. That's an at-bat he's never going to forget. And here comes the Yankees manager to the mound. Pitching change coming. Luis Heal will depart. We'll be back in a minute with a new arm on the mound. New now pitcher for the Yankees, Ron Marinaccio. On for his major league oh. debut and a moment he will never forget. Better believe that. It's always so special the first time you get into a big league ball game. I did it as a position player, but for him, as a pitcher, I'm sure there's some nerves there. Probably don't want to squeeze the baseball too tight. Just relax and do what you're capable of doing. This to center field. Judge makes the grab. And that is that. But a run will score in the inning on this RBI double. It's now a 4 nothing ball game. You're dialed into the show. We head to the bottom of the fifth and stepping in for the Yankees, Anthony Rizzo. Well, a big lead like this is comfortable many times, but not when these two teams are matching up. You got to continue to keep your head down, play catch with that catcher, and just try to move through this lineup. The wide to kick the pitch. The other way. Jump throw. Rizzo out of the play. They've got a potent lineup, and when you think about teams capable of rallying from this kind of deficit, they're right at the top of the list. So up next, Anthony Volpe. Fall off foul. It looks like the weather could actually play a factor in this one. It's coming down pretty good. Yeah, it is, and it's not too bad yet, but the field's not going to be able to hold up if the rain gets any worse than this. So keep an eye on the pitcher's mound as well, and the rest of the infield start to puddle up a little bit. Alex Verdugo stepping in now for the Yankees. Two down, nobody on. Last half of inning number five. Oh, he's got to be pretty proud of this outing so far. Sometimes guys cower coming into a ballpark like this, but he's attacked hitters. Pitching on the road like this is very impressive. This has been a treat to watch. Good job to fight that one off. Now this offense has just been locked down. Almost five full innings of shutout baseball. And a pitch. Gets a piece and stays alive. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And the Yanks go quietly. Down in order, go to Yankees. They trail it here for nothing. Welcome back to the ballpark. All right, we go to the top half of inning number six. Now it's the right fielder, Hunter Renfro. Swing and a miss struck him out. Now it's the second baseman, Michael Massey. Baseman, Michael Massey. Kicks and fires. And a foul ball. One down, base is empty. Short hop liner handled it short. Volpe throws it to first in time. 
Two quick outs to open the top of the six. The first baseman, Julieski Guriel. Now it's Julie Guriel. And a 1 1. Slice down the right side. Two down, nobody on. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. Royals set down in order. Nothing doing for the offense that time. Top of the order due up in the home half of the sixth. It's the Royals four and the Yankees nothing. And we're back. Leading Bottom of the six. Glaber Torres up to the, the plate. Here comes a pitch. So a foul ball makes it one and two. The wind of the pitch. And now two and two. That's towards center. Isbell moving under this one. Puts it away for the out. And there's one down. It really feels like we might be running out of time before a rain delay is called. This rain is not letting up. Yeah, and if we do get a delay, the unfortunate thing is the clock's going to start ticking on these pitchers, and they won't be able to keep their arms warm forever if it's a long break and going to have to exit this game a little early. That one way outside, and that's ball two. Talk about the right guy at the right spot. They really need a rally, and this guy is someone you can believe in to find a way to get on base. Line drive, caught! That swing right there tells me he's seeing the ball pretty well. I know it didn't produce a hit, but he made solid contact, and that's all you're looking to do anytime you're at the plate. Two outs, base is empty. Now it's Aaron Judge up to the plate. The Royals leading by four here in the bottom of the sixth. And another ball. Here's a 2 2. Spoils the two strike pitch, and he'll see another. in the dirt. Well, just about to hit that century mark, 100 pitches for this game. Packs and misses. It's a strikeout. One, two, three, go the Yankees. They're down 4 nothing. Back here in New York, we go to the top of the seventh. Here's the third baseman, number 11. When you talk about elite defensive third baseman, this guy is at the top of the list. Righty delivers. And another ball. This guy plays third base like he's a shortstop, and he welcomes the difficult play. Can throw from so many different angles and makes really tough plays look very easy. Sends it to first. And the leadoff intercept down to open the seven. And now it's Kyle Isbell. One down, base is empty. Double barreled action in the bullpen. Nestor Cortez Jr., the left hander, up and throwing. Lighter, the right hander, loosening up as well. And a foul ball. Base is empty one away here at the top half of inning number seven. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. Trying to work his way back into the count right there, but so much for that. Pretty good pitch, but just doesn't get the call on 3-0. So the lineup flips over. Next to hit, Tommy Pham. Kicks and deals. 
no. just off the outside edge and it's two and one. Just missed. Here comes the pitch. Runner breaks for second. Foul ball there. Throw over to first. And he's back in easily. Outside, and that is ball four. Well, interesting. He went with the off speed and walked the hitter. Man, you got to challenge the guy with the fastball. And the batter will be the shortstop, Bobby Witt Jr. Siggy, he's got a history of coming through into big spots. I know I like to talk about, I'm not sure whether clutch actually exists, but you look at the numbers, and this guy always seems to deliver in those spots. Well, I think it's the ability to assess the situation, understanding what the pitcher has, what he's trying to get people out on, and then being able to use the entire field. And that drops in for a strike. If you're a guy that can only hit to one field, then you're really not going to be able to come through in clutch situations because pitchers are going to adjust. But Feed to second, that's one. On the Rizzo at first, and they get the double play. So they're able to work around a pair of walks in the inning. Seventh inning stretch time. It's the Royals four and the Yankees nothing. Back in the Bronx, set for the last half of the seventh. Here's the catcher, Austin Wells. When you played, did you play with guys that you thought were clutch and sort of what were the attributes you said that's what he possesses that allows him to come through? Well, we always used to joke, you know, guys want to eat steak, and there were some that just had a knack, could understand it. All right, this is a, a big, you know, payout if I can come through with a knock here. But I think when you really look at the numbers, you really audit everything, guys kind of are who they are. And now the lefty. And another ball. The Yankees looking to rally. The Yankees down by four. Here at the bottom of the seven. And that is cut on and missed. And the count's even at two. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Carlos Hernandez, the hard throwing righty, is up and loosening. Singer warming up as well. And a pitch. Swing and a miss. Chase the fastball up the ladder for strike three. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher on the same page right now. Two outs, base is empty. And up next for New York, Jazz Chisholm Jr. That one not close. And yeah, that's ball two. Swing and a miss. Looked off balance that time. So impressive how the velo is still there, even this deep into the outing. The pitch. He goes down looking. So the Yanks go in order. They're on the short end of a 4 nothing score. Pitching change here, Mark Leiter Jr. Yeah, this is the best way to make your major league debut. No one on base. Yeah, you're already going to be a little nervous out there, so I think it's a nice job by the skipper to get him in here without any added pressure with traffic on the bases. So up now for Kansas City, Salvador Perez. He might just be the best hitting catcher in the game today. Well, Boog, he's so valuable, does a good job behind the plate, but offensively, he's a middle of the order type of bat, especially when you talk about catchers, and their number one job is to handle the pitching staff and prevent runs. This guy is able to add runs by producing it. Here's a 2-2. Just Bravo. misses the mark outside the zone. Really good take, especially with two strikes.
And he deals. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. He didn't make it easy for him on the mound, but they still get the strikeout. First strikeout for him in this one. That splitter is maybe the go-to pitch when he's looking for a swing and miss like that. He throws it quite a bit, and that's a good example of the effect it can have on a hitter. Now at the plate, M.J. Melendez. He had a big swing for these guys way back in the first inning. Yeah, Boogie didn't waste any time in this one. The solo shot really got his team going, and he's looking for more right here. One down, base is empty. Swing and a miss as he was out front. Movement in the bullpen. Nestor Cortez Jr. getting loose out there for Aaron Boone. Right-handed reliever. Got him swinging. Chance to strike out the side now. You talk about the benefits, the advantages of relievers who can come in and get the swing and miss, whether it's inherited runners or maybe a little jam that they get into themselves. Knowing that they can miss the bat, tell you what, that's huge and can change the ball game. Now it's on a Renfro. Two outs. Strike two. And another ball. And a swing and a miss. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. Nothing doing for the Royals, but they're in front for nothing. Back now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth. Carlos Hernandez on for his major league debut. So we'll see if he's ready for the big stage. He just has to remember this is the same game that he's played all the way through the minor leagues to this point. The only difference, there are just more people in the stands and it's a bigger stadium, but the game itself is still the same. Look at the catcher, whatever fingers he puts down, that's what you throw, and just let him lead you in this one. Right side. Rizzo out of the play. The batter number 11. Shortstop. Anthony. And now the shortstop, Anthony Volpe. The Royals leading by four near the bottom half of the eighth inning. That one finds the zone. Now three and two. Activity in the Kansas City bullpen. Alec Marsh preparing to come on if needed. Three, two. Got it by him for the K. I'll see it more commonly in the sport these days, but man, a triple digit fastball blown right by someone is still pretty awesome to witness. I mean, you got to be geared up and ready to swing it when a guy like this comes out of the bullpen because that fastball, it eats, and if you're not ready, you're going to be walking back to the dugout. The 1 1. And ball. another ball. late with the swing there. Well, you got to find a way to catch up to that pitch. Perhaps shorten the swing, eliminate the stride. That one came in hot, but right down the middle, you're saying to yourself, how did I miss that pitch? Got to make a quick adjustment. Witt grabs it on the run. It's the top of the ninth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Phil Bickford. And he comes on here for the first time this season, and I'm sure there's some nerves involved in that, so we'll see how he settles in. And to the plate for Kansas City, Michael Massey. Michael Massey. 
Ball to strike. Good eye in that spot. Right side. Stanton is there. He makes the grab, and there's one down. Now batting, the first baseman, Yuli, Yuli Gurriel, comes up to hit. Base is empty, one away. You're at the top of the night. Swing and a miss as he chases that one darting out of the zone. Activity in the bullpen for the Yankees. Nestor Cortez Jr. getting loose out there for Aaron Boone. And a ball and two strikes. Bounce to the right. Collected by Torres. Slings to first. And Guriel is out. Now that third baseman. Michael Two outs, base is empty. Now the third baseman. Line to second, snagged on the bounce. Torres over to first, and the inning is over. No runs, no hits, no errors. To the bottom of the ninth we go. Top of the order, due up. It's the Royals four and the Yankees nothing. Back now in the Bronx. Here, Here comes Glaber Torres. The second baseman. Glaber Torres. And strike two. Hit on the ground to the right side. Steps on first yes, for the out. out. Now batting the designated hitter, Juan Soto. And now it's Juan Soto. You have to look for positives in this game. That last at bat was a loud out, but the takeaway is they're hitting the ball hard, and that's a good thing. Those are going to fall eventually. That's a strike across the top of the zone. The Yanks down by four here in the last half of inning number nine. Oh. And another ball straightened him up a little bit. One down, base is empty. Okay. And that skips in the dirt. Foul. We'll see another payoff pitch. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. So it's their last the chance in this one. And right now big number 99, Aaron Judge. Two down, nobody on. We're in the last half of the ninth inning. And that one almost hit him. Four and Judge takes his walk. Boog, if I were him, I'd be nibbling around okay. the plate as well. I mean, this guy is just capable of hitting pitches outside of the zone and driving them a long way. Runner at first with two away. Austin Wells now at the plate. Hernandez is just one strike away. And a swing and a miss, and that is the ball game. Reagans with his first major league win. Yeah, nicely done. I'm sure he'll feel very good about that and get the ball for his trophy case as he should. A start he won't ever forget. A 4 nothing shutout in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire crew, I'm John Shabby saying so long.